Hello and welcome back. I've started again and hopefully this will reboot everything into the right go. Okay, so welcome again. Good evening and welcome to You Create Art at Home. My name is Bess. If this is the first time you have come to one of my painting sessions, welcome, welcome. I'm sorry about the technical issues. That is the world we live in. That is the internet. We're all in lockdown. Everybody's using it on a Friday night and it's just like blur. But I have rejigged all my cables, replugged everything in, put everything on hold, started and restarted. So hopefully we're going to be good to go. So I'm going to delete that last thread. So if you wouldn't mind, gorgeous friends, please type in my chat your name, where you're from, and if you're using acrylics and watercolors. I know you've already just done that and that's okay, but otherwise I can't keep track and I can't respond to you because that chat has just deleted from me. All right? But it's my wedding anniversary and I am in a blah, blah, blah because I'm late. So I think we should just get on and paint, shall we? As you know, with You Create Art at Home, it's all about helping you have a lovely creative time with me. I'm here to guide you, to inspire you and give you some technical tips. Please don't stress about trying to get it exactly, exactly and not enjoy the process. You know, if it's Friday morning for you, have a lovely cup of tea or coffee and relax into a lovely Friday morning. If it's Friday evening for you and you're down here in the Southern Hemisphere, then just chill out, get yourself a glass of wine or a cup of tea or coffee and just enjoy the time to yourself, okay? I want you to have fun. I want us to have fun. I want us, oh, we're back. Thank you, Anna. She's in acrylics. Linda, hi, thank you. You're using acrylics. It's really important, I know, because I know there was a couple of watercolor people coming through, which is fine. It doesn't matter what you're painting with. It doesn't matter if you're using paper or canvas, okay? This was last week's, and if you remember, we started off with the central piece here, then we started with the, the um, water, then we did all the detailing, and then we finished off with this, uh, the florals at the front. I love it, everybody seemed to really love it, which was smashing, and today we're taking it step by step. So the second one, if you've got my website open on an iPad or something, or you've got a phone, the heading on um, my page or there somewhere on the photographs is the picture of this, which is the trilogy. And we're going to do this one today, which is the front door. Reason being is this is probably the most tricky one. So by the time we get to this one, we'll have mastered the color palette. This one has a little bit more structure and a little bit more form. So I'm hoping it will give you good confidence when we get to this one over here. Hi Pam, acrylics, beautiful, beautiful. I know you're all there guys, 11 of you today. Um, there's usually plenty more on the replay. If you're coming in on the replay, please type in hashtag replay because that way I get a notification and I can chat to you afterwards. There's nothing wrong with coming on the replay. We've all got busy lives. All right, so let's put that one to one side. You might wanna have it to hand so that you can try and match the colors because eventually what we do want to do is have these three together, you know, one, two, three. I'm actually gonna frame mine as a trilogy, just like they are here. And so if you've got it to hand, then you can um, check the colors off. Now, that's especially important if you don't have the paint left over from last week. I do, because I put Glad Wrap on it or cling film. If you don't and you're starting again, then it'll just help you with that mixing. If you are mixing colors, you can see underneath my canvas, I've got a piece of white paper. You don't have to have art paper. It could be the back of a something in the rubbish bin, but just have something where you can mix your colors and get the right color to what you wanna put on your canvas or your piece of paper, all right? Beautiful, okay, so we've got all of you lo lovely ladies are in. Let's get painting. So the first thing I'm gonna do with a medium sized brush is we're gonna do the drawing part of it. Let's just move that one out of the way so it doesn't become confusing. It's there for me to look at, but it won't be in your way. All right, so we're gonna get a tiny bit of blue and I'm just using the blue, so you, I dipped it in the water, uh, sorry, in the paint, and then I put it back in the water. So this is a watery blue, look, you can see. It's really loose and watery. And this is what we're gonna use for drawing. Joe is just watching tonight. No problem, Joe. Enjoy, darling. All good. 
All right. I want you to see where, uh, if I get a brush, this will help you. You can see where your halfway mark is on your canvas. I want you to put a dot about one centimeter in from your halfway mark. Can you see that? That is where we're going to um, do the side of our house. Let's have a look at the crossing. We're going to make it super easy. Where it goes down to is halfway. So let me show you what that looks like. I've just dripped water all over my canvas. Straight line all the way down. Don't make it perfect. These are um, Grecian cob walls. So they can be a little bit, um, what's the word, irregular. I've got a great big water drip. So we've just, that is not halfway, yeah? There's the halfway mark. Make sure you've gone to the left of halfway. Sue's going to have to leave early because she's booked in at 11. That's okay, Sue, you know it's on the replay. You can always catch up. Start today if you want to, let it dry, come back on the replay. You know where to find me, at You Create Art at Home. Go to the videos, it will be the last video because there won't be another video until Monday, okay? We've got Linda from Campira. Love, love, love my little church painting from last week. Can't wait for this one. Oh, now, did you notice last week? I forgot. Let me put this up here close and close. Do you remember? I forgot to tell you to paint the church, the cross on the top. Do. And I noticed it in my mum. So afterwards, I always FaceTime mum and have a chat. And I said, oh, the cross, I forgot it. And she goes, well, if you look in your picture, you'll see that it's there. Ooh, whoopsie. So hopefully you've just, look, all it is, if you haven't done it and you want to do it today, all it is is a tiny little dome whoop, of white and then a cross on the top. All right? Okay. All right, so we've done that. Now, at the moment, that's a right angle. And actually, the, because... These are steps going up to the front door. We want it to be a curve, like, do, do you know what I mean? But like a banister coming down, but it's not a banister, it's just a wall. So if I go across, well, if this is, the only way I can do this is talking like halfway. So there's my halfway line, yeah? And there's the edge of my canvas, about halfway between my halfway mark and the canvas, I'm going to curve and do a sweeping curve down. Okay? Curve and do a sweeping curve down. Don't worry about that line there. This is going to be C, um, the C, so it will end up being painted over anyway. Okay? So that is the, this is the water. This is going to be the C here. This is the whitewash wall. Excellent. Okay, now we're going to do a parallel line. Don't worry if it's wobbly. Again, you know that it's a cob wall. And I want you to do a third parallel line, but thinner, closer together. Okay, so you should, I'm going to raise that up just because it's obviously faint in watercolour. So, and it, although I'm using acrylics, because I've wetted it, or it's called letting it down, because I've let it down, it does look like watercolour, all right? Internet is unstable because of the rain. We'll wait for the catch-up. Oh, dear. I'm so sorry, people, if it's unstable. I don't know what to do. I can't make it any better. So I'm just going to keep plodding on, like a good old dip up British. Stip, stiff upper lip British. So if some frames drop out, you're not going to miss very much. It will stick and then it will keep going. So I guess you're just going to have to have a glass of wine in between. Okay. So this bit here, so we've got uh, the wall. I'm just looking at this now thinking it's not quite deep enough. People, you're going to be annoyed, but you see that middle line? I'm going to take it out. So what I've used is a, another brush with water. And now I'm just going to use my cloth and I'm going to take that line out. We're going to paint over it, so don't, don't worry about it. But when I'm just looking at it, I'm thinking, yeah, that wasn't wide enough. So 
I've got a, I've got a, a width of about two centimeters, I guess. And now I'm going to do that extra parallel line, which is about one centimeter. Like that, that's better. So that's the outside of the house. This is like the shadow area going into the depth, and this will be our door. In front of this, I want you to put a small curve. And a small curve, and then make it go straight down. And then I want you, you've got to imagine that this is the other side of the bit going up the steps. So we're going to put a plant on there in a minute, but we need a flat surface here to put the plant on. So to make it look dimensional, the easiest way to say is do a squashed diamond shape. And then a vertical line down, and that is the flat surface where our pot will sit and this is the bottom of that wall. Difficult to envisage and understand. You've just got to be guided by me and understand that I'm okay, I'm going to get you there. Okay. So we need to make this look three-dimensional. In order to make this three-dimensional, we need to put in the stairs and we need to put in the kind of inside part of this wall. So horizontal stairs, I'm going to go from where I've done my diamond in between the curve about halfway. This is going to be the top step and it's going to go right across. Not as far as that curve because this is going to be the flat inside part of the wall. Hopefully you're all getting this okay. If not, I'm talking to myself on a Friday night and painting myself a nice little picture. <laughs> uh. Oh, people. COVID, COVID. Hey, COVID, COVID. Okay, we're going to put the um, front gate on. And if we put the front gate on, then that's going to set everything in itself. So this curve here is the bit that the gate would be attached to. Does that make sense? Or this bit here is where it's attached to, and that's where the latch is. Either way, I'm going to do an arch shape like that, and then a vertical down, and that's going to be my little blue picket fence. You can make it as high as you want to. We're going to put detail in it later. So that's going to be our little picket fence. Now, the most important thing, if you're painting right now, is to watch where I put this. Because in order to make this look curved and dimensional, I need to create a little flat piece here. This is kind of like this type of thing here. And we're going to put a planter on here in a minute. So it's like the top of this wall. So I've created a little pocket there. I then do another vertical which when we start to put shadow in a minute will help um, with all of this, it will make sense. And then between that curve and that curve about halfway, a bit further than halfway, I'm going to do another vertical. And that vertical there is where the wall goes from flat and it starts coming down. So it's actually a corner, that there. And when we start doing our sh shading in a minute, it will become a lot more obvious. Okay, so right now you just need to follow in these lines. So this line here is the gate. This line here is the protruding part of the wall. This is the receding corner of the wall. This is our top step. And we're going to take it down. Just get a bit more paint on my brush. And we're going to do our second step straight across and step it down and we're going to do our third step and step it down 
and we're going to do our fourth step and that one look goes right come for me goes right off the canvas if if it doesn't for you does not matter okay does not matter how are we doing everybody are you still with me or are you having really bad reception I have 15 viewers still, so I'm assuming you're still painting. If you're not, sadly, I am actually on my own chatting to myself. <laughs> but anyway, that's life, as they say. Okay, so can you, this piece here is, and I, I want you to have a look while I'm doing it, so you're going to have to stop and look up. This piece here is a curvy bit of wall. It curves up the top of the wall, comes over the back, and then curves down. And that is the top side. So if you imagine that is the top of the wall, and that is the top of the wall, and it just flattens off, and that's where we're going to put a planter in a minute. All right? And that's going to help. Jill says, not painting today. Got a visitor. We'll do this tomorrow night. All good, Jill. That's fine. You can listen with your visitor, show your visitor, and invite them to join You Create Art at Home. Tell them, like the page, Karen is batty as a barn cake, crazy as a Christmas cracker, but we get some great art. <laughs> and she is very well, she could be a he, could be a he, um, is very welcome to join You Create Art at Home, our very special creative family for you beautiful people that love to paint, draw, and just have a jolly good time. Okay, we have nearly done all of the drawing. Are you feeling comfortable with your drawing? How is it going? I'm not on my own, thank you, Gillian. <laughs> how, so, how's your drawing going? Yeah, are you happy with it? So, I want you to, if you only have one brush, then obviously you only have one brush. If you have a bigger brush, let's try and find a bigger brush. And with the same blue, Pardon me, I'm hungry. With the same blue, I want you to paint straight lines, still watery, down your gate, vertical. So I'm just using the width of the brush. And I'm not really worried if it's exactly like that picture. I mean, this is inspiration, isn't it? It's there to inspire us. So I've with mine, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got seven vertical lines. All right. And then I'm just going to put one horizontal, you know, like a gate would have, and two horizontals. Now, we are going to paint that thicker in a minute. But what I want to do is just help you divide up your picture. Yes, going okay. Fantastic. Thank you, Helen, for letting me know. Uh, Janice, not on your own, but drawing it for the moment. All good, Janice. All good, all good. Thank you. I know I'm asking too much of you to keep commenting, but I do need to know that you're all still there. Well, I don't need to know. Like I say, I can carry on painting to myself. Um, okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just laying in a little bit of colour to help you build your dimension, all right? I'm going to do exactly the same with this front door. So... I'm just going to put in some um, stripes and I'm doing them about double width of the brush. If you've got a super thick brush, you might not want to do them double width, but they're planks of wood and it's likely that these planks of wood are going to be wider than the planks in the gate. Yeah. So you might only get, I don't know, three planks in maybe. And don't try and fill all of the color, all of the um, space in between. Leave that white space. We'll come back to it. This is just sketching out at the moment, yeah? And I just want to help you get a sense of design by filling it in slowly. Sylvia's making you use your mess. Good, good job, Syl. <laughs> good job. <sighs> Look at me. Look at me from muraling. Look at my hands. Covered in paint. Covered. Okay, so we've coloured in where the door is going to be. We've coloured in where the gate is going to be. I want you to get a tiny bit of purple. Now, I have a tiny bit of purple here, look. This is left over from the flowers last week. 
Please don't make it too thick on your brush. We're just sketching it in, okay? So if you are using watercolors, this will be a base layer for you and we will go darker for you. So you might need a hairdryer in between just to um, dry the layers. But if we don't paint too thickly, actually it will probably dry on its own, okay? So this part of the wall, to get the sense of depth in the corner, I'm painting it in with purple. And then I'm just going to do the same coming down here. Now it's an irregular shape because it's the shadow from this pot that we're going to put here. So don't worry too much about it for now, exactly what the shape is, but just put a bit of shadow in there and that's going to help give you a sense of depth, yeah? That purple we're also going to put on this front face here of this funny little wall that we did at the, at the very front here. And I'm actually going to paint down my edges as well so that the colour curves around the edges. I did do that on my grease one last week, look, but I forgot to do the bottom. So while I've got my paint today, I'm going to do that bottom. Especially when you're doing small paintings, unless you're going to frame them in wood, if you're going to hang them on the wall, it is nice to paint the edges, I think, but that is personal. Okay, then finally, one more place for this purple shadow. It's going to go here. And I really, really, if that is a, um, a three in terms of colour, I want this to be a two. So I want it to be lighter. And if you put it on and you put too much on, just wash the paint out of your brush and just let it become lighter again. Another way to make it go lighter is to get your cloth or a paper towel and just paint it and then just gently take some of the paint off and you're just le left with a, a little bit of colour but not too much depth. Remember, these walls are predominantly white, okay? Lucy, going to watch you later, might try and draw with a paintbrush, making a right old mess, so we'll watch, you, watch for now. Okay, Lucy, that's fine. Do you know what? It's fantastic that you're learning that actually you might need to stop and start and you want to come back. So that's absolutely fine. Totally understand. So this colour and this colour, the gate and the door were the same colours. This was purple. This is the same amount of colour on these two. And this one is a shade lighter. Okay. When we're doing these tonal pieces, this is a real skill, you learning the, the sort of the, the light and dark of the tones, I guess, is, is a skill that you will learn, you'll get to understand. And when I talk in scales of one to 10, it just helps. So this color here, this would be my 10 in that color, which means this is about three. So now you can start to see where you get to. This would be my 10 in that purple, so that there is about a four and that would be about a two. So it helps to understand how much white, how much water to let it up, add more color, all that sort of thing. And if you're not sure, just do it on paper first, on a spare piece. Okie dokie, you're doing great. Now, so we've done those bits. This here is dark shadow. I want you to mix the purple and the blue together So you can look, if you look at my palette, there's my blue, there's my purple. I've got a tone in the middle and that is going to be my shady area there. So this is the hard return going in. So it helps to knock the door into an alcove. Nice steady hand. Use the bristles. So when you're pushing on your brush, go nice and slowly. The bristles of the brush will open out. Watch me again. Watch my hand, push down, the bristles open out, and all I need to do is drag my bristles and I get a really nice smooth line. Does not have to be a perfect line at all. These are, as I've said, old Grecian cob walls, so it does not have to be perfect. Okay, so that's that line going in, in the depth. Right. Now, the last thing we're going to do before we do our C is we're going to paint all of this white. 
So grab your white and don't worry if it's slightly off color. I'm okay with that. But we, oh, this has got pink in it. That's okay, it doesn't matter. We're gonna add blue later. But I just want to add a layer of white onto these walls so it can start to dry, okay? Try and keep your blue lines showing a little bit. You can paint over them a little bit, but try and keep them showing a tad, if I were you. Mine's coming out very pinky. I wouldn't advise that particularly. It's supposed to be a blue painting. In fact, I am gonna wash my brush. It's coming out really pink. If in doubt, wash your brush. Okay, that's better. A little bit of pink is not gonna matter, but a lot of pink. It's gonna look like baby. Okay, so that's that wall there done. Then the top of this wall here, try and get it in between those two blue lines, like that, down the sides. Then this tiny bit of gate by the gate here and the tiny bit on the top. <coughs> Excuse me, coughing. I hope David's all right. I'm sharing with you the anxiety I feel for my husband's predicament. Not very nice on Valentine's Day. And I had this lovely treat booked, booked, planned. I bought this lovely box of cards. It's a bit like, for you Aussies, it's a bit like, um, what's that stupid program called? Uh, oh, what's it called? You know where they get married? Love at first sight. And then they get given a box and they have to ask each other tricky questions. Well, I've got a box, I bought a box, and it said, the, which it is not naff at all. Well, it, maybe it is if you're not very romantic, but I am a little bit romantic. And it's called The Story of Our Love. And the idea is you sit down together, you ask each other questions, and then you write the story of your love, and it gets kept in a little box for your kitty winks to have. And it's lots of questions about where you first met, um, what you're attracted to each other, what does your favorite thing to do? What's your future ideas? All that sort of stuff. So that's what we were gonna to do tonight with a nice bottle of verve. But I'm not sure that's gonna happen. So, okay, so look, I'm, I'm looking, when I look at my picture through the screen, I can really start to see the dimension. Hopefully you're seeing that too. I think it's looking beautiful. You think your tones are too dark, mum. If they are, why don't you wet them and then put a cloth on top and peel some back? Uh, watching, but doing it later, Sandra said. Wonderful as usual. I've learned so much in these lockdown weeks. It's been a joy. Ah, oh, the joy and the pleasure is all mine, Sandra. I've learned a lot too. I've learned that I never know, knew I could do this to a million people around the world. Who knew that I could? It's been fantastic. I've absolutely loved it. So thank you. The pleasure is mine. Okay. I want to differentiate the shadow in the steps. So I want it to be blue. I'm going to use the purple that I've created, but I want to change it a tiddly bit. So watch this. I'm going to dip it into orange and put some orange into it. It's still going to be predominantly blue, but you know, like when you go to English people, if you go to B&Q, Australian people, if you go to Bunnings, and you have those shade cards, look. If I put the color there, can you see that color? It's almost like dusky blue. By adding a tiny bit of orange, mind, not very much. Let me show you the blue above that. So that's the blue out of the tube, which is really bright. Then when we added blue and pink last week, we ended up getting the purple tone, which is down here. You can then add white to that and you'll get a lighter tone. So it's really important to play with your colors. And if you put it on paper, like I've just done here, you can then see really easily, what? I'll just chuck the paintbrush at myself. You can then see really easily how a tiny amount of paint can change it and take it to a new color. So can you see, hopefully, the difference there, yeah? You can see, can you see, that is almost like, it's the sort of color my Nanny Edwards would like to wear, kind of purpley blue, but a little bit dusty. And it's the orange that create that kind of dusty color. It takes it from being 
that baby icky blue into something a little bit more refined. <laughs> so that colour that I've got, so it's the purple and the blue together, I just need to mix a little bit more. So look, I'm dragging blue from one side, I'm dragging the purple, if I don't have enough I'm just going to add a little bit more pink, add some white, I'm back to that tone, there we go. Now dip it in the orange, look how much orange I've got, if I put it there, uh, if I hold it up to the camera, you can see hardly any orange on my brush at all. Okay, then add it in there. And the key is to add a little bit at a time, otherwise it could go brown. And straight away, I'm back to that tone there. Okay, this is the colour I want to do on the front flat of the steps. Now watch how I'm painting it. I'm dragging my brush horizontally to get the paint out of my bristles. Have I made that completely flat in colour, people? Oh, no, I haven't. Okay, now wash your brush. Get the colour out of your brush. Stop, watch. Watching you, watching you. You need to watch me, otherwise you can't learn, okay? So, I've wiped my brush of that dusky, bluey, orangey colour. I've wiped my brush horizontally in stripes to create the step. Now, with a wet brush, I can go over that colour And the water means that the paint will move across the canvas and it will the, the um, colour will drop into all of those little cracks. All the little cracks and all the little... It's much easier on paper, can I just say, than it is on canvas when you're using water to manipulate paint because you don't have to worry about the cracks, okay? Why am I using water instead of more paint? Well, that's because the water is, I'm using as a lubricant and it means that I don't get a really heavy layer. So if I then want to add another darker element to the stairs, like another depth of shadow, I can. But if I've painted it super thick like this, right across, then all you get is a sense of real, almost like it's too thick, it's too flat um, and there's no sense of, you know, lightness to the painting. So I can always add more paint. I say this all the time. You can always add more paint. This here, this is just shade, this is just sketching with paint at this stage. And I'm just starting to build up the colours to create my story. Okay? So you can see, I'm going to lift that up. You can see how watery that is. So, Mum, it's not very heavy in paint. Look, you can see the, still see the canvas behind. Bye, Sue. See ya. You can still see the canvas behind. All right. And it's a process, isn't it? We're letting it dry as we go. It's a bit hard for me tonight because it's so cold outside that I'm not getting much drying happening. I might have to get my hair drier, but hopefully I won't have to. Okay, that's it. Now, if you're brave enough, follow this step. If you're too scared, don't follow it. Either way, neither's right or wrong. However, we're going to paint the ocean, and for me, I'm going to turn it upside down to do that so I don't smudge any of this. All right? The first thing we're going to do is look at our colours that we had from last week, and we're going to replicate the same colours, okay? The only difference being is in this painting, we're going to have some sky as well, okay? So I'm going to do a skyline here. Okay? I'm going to turn my painting from last week upside down as well. I might try and put it this side so then you can see the colour better. So most of my paintings are upside down. This is my sky. This is my sea. Okay? Now, all of this is sea, so I'm going to push my canvas up so I get the same colours running across the section of water. This is sky. So I'm going to do the sky first. And I've got very... If you look at this, look, I'll put it in the water. Can you see how blue my water pot's gone? Yours will be the same. 
So I've dipped my brush in white and I've got the blue water pot water and I'm literally just going to go across the sky like that and it's very, very light, very pale. Just going to go backwards and forwards the sea line just so it doesn't become a really obvious line and I'm just blending it out. So that watery area is going to be my sky. I'm going to get some more white and I'm just going to dab and I'm doing it upside down but I'm just dabbing in a few clouds. Look, just upside down, just a few clouds in the sky and that's just pure white paint just using the brush to kind of dab across and create that cloud formation. If I lift that up, I'll write, put it around the right way and I'll lift it up so you can see it nice and close. So it's nothing that specific, but they're just dabs in kind of cloudy, cloudy shapes. All right, I'm gonna reposition my canvas so the horizon and the colors all match. Now I can remember that I used this blue for the skin for the sea last week. So this is the darkest blue here, which is gonna help make our beautiful house pop forward. So I'm carefully doing the line first around the wall. And because this is, you know, a set of three, I do want to have the same sort of colors and the same sort of technique. So if you have, if you did have a go at palette knifing last week, then you might want to go and get your palette knife. If you haven't got a palette knife to hand or you didn't come last week, or this is the first time you're joining us, then you can use anything really that you have in your kitchen a plastic spoon, anything, the handle of something, and you just lay it on. I'll show you in a minute. I'm just putting my base color. So now I'm putting white at the top to the horizon. That's a little bit too light. I'm just going to knock the paint off. These brushes with the square head, they're called chisel brushes, are great for doing oceans and things like that because you can drag them across and you get really nice horizontal lining. So I'm happy with that coloring. I'm now gonna go and get um, a palette knife, hang on. I know you can still hear me because I've got my walkie talkie mic. So let me just go and get a palette knife out the back. Here we are. Where are they? That will do. Beautiful. But you can use a plastic spoon. You could use a knife. You could use a paddle pop stick or a lollipop stick. A wooden lollipop stick works fine. And all that it does is that when you put it on, now I've matched my colours. Look, I'm just going to pick that one up and move it out of the way. And let's move that in the middle so you can see it. All you do is you put it on and you drag it across. And it just gives a little bit of texture. It just adds texture. So you don't try and over blend when you're using a palette knife. You use the palette knife to create the patterning, the movement, the texture. A bit tricky around the corner look, see what I'm doing? I'm just gonna stri strike it across like that. It's a bit tricky going around the corners, but you get the idea. And then a little bit of that mid-tone blue, I'm just going to add that in too. It's really nice when it hangs on a wall, you then get to see, you know, a little bit of movement. You can see where things have been cut through. Um, the other option is you put it on like this and you go across, but then you get definite drag marks, which I don't want. 
I'm going to have to paint that out now. So I'm just, I want to, oh, I'm not doing a very good job now. Shouldn't have done that, should I? Oh, no! Now put blue up there. Okay. I'm going to turn it this way and do it this way. So just pop it down and slide it off. Pop it down and slide it off. Let's check, check my colourings. A bit more dark here. Awesome. Okie dokes. So can you see, look, there's my, there's my, um, my um, sea into sky and that painting there sits there. So you can see that the colours run from one to the other and that's what I was trying to achieve. That's dash clever. I know it's dash clever, Joe. These are all tricks of the trade. I'm sharing with you. Okay, I'm just trying to add in a bit more of a defined horizon. So I've added in a darker blue and then I just drag my other brush, my bigger brush horizontal. And then I just want to feather that line out. Like that, beautiful. Okay, so that's my C done. Now we are going to start to paint in the rest of our painting, okay? Before we do any of the extra blue, we're going to put in our terracotta pots. Okay, so using my piece of paper, I'm going to show you. Here's orange. If you add blue, you end up with brown. Lots of blue, you end up with brown. A little bit of blue and a tiny dash of pink and you'll end up with terracotta. Okay, so we are going to put in a big terracotta pot here and you'll find you can see from mine that you'll end up, be, if your white is still wet, it will end up being um, a paley colour and that's okay, we can overpaint it but let's at least mark in the colour of where it's going to be. So I'm using orange and pink and a little bit of blue to get that brownie colour for terracotta and I'm just marking in where my terracotta pot is going to be. I might have to go and get some more orange. That's better. So it's oh, I want it to I want it to finish look to sit on that plinth there. On that plinth of the wall like that. Okay, so that's that one there. And then the other one is up here. And because I've just painted that blue, I'm not sure how it's going to go. So if you want to wait for yours because your blue is too wet, then I understand that. But obviously, you guys are waiting for me. So I can't do that. So I'm going to have to plow on. So I'm trying to make this terracotta without having to get up and get orange by adding in yellow and then some more pink to try and get the orangey color. Okay. And we are now going to do, so if you imagine this is the top of the wall here, this piece here, I'm going to add in a terracotta square. Now, nah, see it's too blue, it's making it all blue. I would get a hairdryer, people, and wait for yours to dry, because otherwise you'll freak out. I'm not going to freak out, I'm going to keep going, but you, you've got time on your hands. The key if you are going on is to make sure that you just lay it on and don't over mix. Because if you pull the blue through, you'll end up making green, which doesn't matter. But we're trying to get a bit of a terracotta colour. You can see mine's slightly gone green there. It's not the end of the world. It's not really not a big deal. Um, I'm definitely going to have to go and get some orange. I don't have any. All I'm making is 
but it's, there's some orangey. I don't want it to be green. I want it to be like a terracotta brown. That's not bad. Okay, so I'm just adding it over the top. I mean, it will dry pretty quickly. If you're using a watercolour, then don't put it on too thick like this. This is obviously if you're using acrylic. Um, and it might be wise to get a hair dryer and just dry in between if necessary. All right, so that's my terracotta pots, the two terracotta pots. And what I do want is to make it look three-dimensional. And to make it look three-dimensional, we need to create a dark, shadowy area. So I'm just adding a bit of purple to that brownie color that I've been painting. And I'm going to put a line down here. And I'm going to use that purple like this, drag it across to create a shadow, a corner, like that. And I'm going to do the same on this side of the pot. I'm just using the purple on one side to create shadow. All right, beautiful. Wash that out. Let's let that dry, those pots. I'm not massively happy with that color of this one. I'm going to go and get some orange. So I don't mind about that shady bit, but I wanted that a bit more terracotta -y. I might have to get some orange. Let me go get some orange. Orange is the key. Orange is the key. Orange is the key. Orange is the key. Cannot do it without orange. Open up my cupboard. And the thing is, all of my every squeezy paints are still at my friend's place where I'm painting the mural. So I've got the giant, giant pots instead. Look, great big gert itcher. Gert itcher, oh my God, that ran out like a train. I've got it flooding everywhere. Flipping heck, it's not my day, peeps. It's not my day. Here we are. Right, so if I add orange, look, the difference between when you add orange is that you end up getting that terracotta brown that you're looking for. Because as we all know, terracotta is an orangey brown, isn't it? So there we go. You need orange. Let's see if I can lay some on top. It's now so thick. I might not be able to do this. Oh, that's okay. Wow, who knew I could do that? Beautiful. Okay, just going to try and create that shape a bit better. Awesome. Okay, so let's let that dry. Let's let that dry. I'm just adding in a bit more orange. There. I'm a fussy pants, aren't I? Getting all perfection about it all. That's okay. Sometimes you just need to worry the detail. I say to you, don't worry the detail, and then I go and worry the detail. Okay, let's work on these, um, this gate and this door. All right, so the reason why I wasn't worried if the blue shined through is because that will essentially be the kind of the shade of the gate, yeah? And I don't want it to be really flat one colored. So you are gonna need a thicker color now. A thicker coat of paint. And I want you to start painting in those struts of your gate. Let me just do a couple and I'll show you what I mean. So you can see, look, I'm painting down one side of the gate strut slat and then I drag my brush sideways like that look and what it does is create a little bit of shadow so I'm not making just a, a really flat I'm not coloring it in just with a flat brush I'm just adding a bit of depth of color another layer of color and then I'm dragging it across like it's a shadow Gonna lift it up and show you. Let me just finish these struts. 
and then I'm going to lift it up and show you how I've done it. Two more to go. It's like being in the gym. One more. Come on, you can do it. Just one more. Come on, ladies, you can do it. One more and rest. <laughs> That's what I should be saying to you lot. And rest. That sounds like bullseye. In one. You get nothing in this game for two in a bed. The Australians are going, what are you talking about? It was an old 1980s program, TV program, bullseye. You had to hit a bullseye on the dart program. Saturday night viewing, it was essential. Okay, do my crossover struts. So that is the first layer of this. Okay, let me lift it up and you can see what I've done. So I've gone down one side, the left-hand side, and then I just pulled it across. The left-hand side, and then I just pulled a little bit of a cross. Okay? And now using a fine brush, I'm going to get a darker blue, and I'm going to line around the outside. So this is where I'm going to now draw the kind of... Um, the shape of the actual, um, what are they called, struts or whatever, the picket part. It takes a steady hand, but I'm sure you can manage. If you get too much paint on your brush when you're doing fine work like this, it'll just blob. So you need to just get a little bit. Nice and therapeutic, this peeps. So I'm using that dark blue. And after I did the second layer of blue, the dragging shadow, I'm now using the dark blue. And I'm starting at across the top to get that curve, then down that shadow side, over the crossbars, because we want them to be in the, dist in the background now and then across the bottom. I'm not doing the opposite side. So you keep that third side, the fourth side, with nothing on it. It's the, it's the highlighted side. Across the top, but creating this curve, down that shadow side, straight across the bottom for the bottom of the fence, the gate. Curve, straight down. So you're essentially doing three sides of your piece of wood for each gate piece each strut, that last one you can't really see. Okay. And now we're gonna overpaint. I know you'll still be painting, that's okay. And now I'm gonna overpaint the door. And I'm painting with little strokes. If you just glance up and you'll see, I'm painting using little strokes to try and give almost like a wood texture. So I'm almost like dragging it across the top. Keeping within those wooden planks that I've drawn, but just dragging it. I'm going to do the same on my side. I'm going to pretend that's a plank, so I'm going to drag that across too, like that. And then with a wet brush, I'm just dragging in between the white gaps, and it will just take it, knock it down. It's called knocking it back. It will just stop it from being bright white, but you'll still get that color change. So it looks like the, the air between or the space between. All right. A little bit of that same color blue, I'm just going to do on my shadow side of the wall. So I'm just adding in a watery element to the top of the purpley color. Then I'm going to wash my brush and I'm going to give a second coat 
over that part of the wall there. And it's all a kind of mucky blue and that's fine because these are really old cobby walls. And I'm going to give another coat. So again, that mucky blue, I'm now going to do in the corner. So this shadow area. So we're basically overworking. If you were using watercolor, you do exactly the same. You want to create a second tone. You see some of the first part of the shadow coming through and then you have a darker bit of shadow. All in that beautiful azure Mediterranean blue. And then where we've got the white, I want to add a tiny, I want touches of blue on here. Not on that bit that we did last, but just, I just want it to be not perfectly white. So I'm just using a wet brush and just adding a little bit of blue. It's almost like a, you know, that, that mucky color. So it's just my, it's just my brush water really. And it will mix with the, with the white and just create a bit more of a mucky old kind of look rather than bright white. Add a bit more depth to this bit of the um, shadow here. And then I want to add some more depth to my steps. So to do that, I'm going to add some more orange to make that brownie color orange that we had. And it's a step. So if we look at our colors, this is a darker color again look. So it's still that color, but I've just added a bit more orange. And I want to add the darkest area. I want to leave about half a centimeter at the top of the steps. And then I go across underneath that step and each corner. And that's where you get those darker areas. So this bit's darker, this bit's darker. Next step down. This corner's darker across. This corner's dar darker and across. Then here, this bit here. So it's each side darker in darker and I know it's hard and you guys were going oh I can't do this I'm not getting it right it is practice it's knowing how much um, extra paint to add how much to leave it is practice there's no two ways about it it is practice but when you're doing a painting like this that is just a tonal painting of one set of colors if you don't work through the different tones then it's just going to look like to be honest, a primary school painting. So it's just gonna look like school blue. So in order to get that layer, that depth, that sense of, um, well, sense of depth in your painting, you have to work very slowly just to add a little bit more pet depth, a little bit more depth. Watch me. So look up from your painting. If I've got the blue and the orange mix here, and I mix this to get that bluey brown, and now I paint down along that shadow there. You can see, look, I've got an extra bit of depth going right into that corner. Yeah, right into that corner. So you have to really feel those subtle changes. And sometimes you have to hold your picture up. So it's easy for me because when I look at it in um, the camera, I can see what you're seeing and I can see straight away where I need to add darkness. And sometimes you need to do that yourself by you know, standing away from your picture, stand it up against a vase or something in the middle of your piece of paper, in the middle of your room and step backwards. Because when you're looking at it from a wall, you're never gonna see it as close as you are now. You know, People don't view art like that. So I'm just adding in a bit more shadow there so I can just see where I just want to take it a little bit darker. But if I start too dark, I can't ever get this really softness. So it's really important that when you're doing it, you just play around with those colors little by little. Okay, using my small brush, I'm gonna get some purple and some blue mixed together. 
Then add a bit of the orange to get this real dark color. It's nearly black. And I'm gonna paint the, what would you call it? Um, door handle, I guess. But it's like one of those um, uh, bolt ones, you know, like you get in a gate. It's like a bolt. 